Okay, and now I'm going to move on to sudo, and this will probably be the last package that I'll select from here. Um, as something that I want to install, but as I said before, there's going to be other um, packages from this section that will be installed. So I'll do this on the graphical browser first of all. Um, might do it from here actually. So if I go up one level, and then I can go into sudo. So the requirements for this is Linux PAM. We've already got that installed now. MIT Kerberos. Um, as I said, I'm not going to bother with that. You probably wouldn't need that unless you're part of an organisation or a larger network. I'm not not entirely sure exactly what it is used for, but I wouldn't have thought um, a single user would use it. There's, there probably are benefits for using it as a single user, but um, not aware of any. Uh, open LDAP uh, again. That's probably more to be used in a larger organisation. So I'm going to skip that one, I think. Let's have a look at it. Um, yeah, I don't think that's particularly necessary. Although I have a feeling that something does require it later on. Um, is it this MTA one, actually? I'll select SEMMAL. That's the simplest of all the MTAs. So, oh right, okay, so this requires open LDAP and recommended Cyrus Sazzle, which this also has got recommendation for. So I'm going to load that up. That recommends Barclay DB. This has got several databases as optional, um, which LDAP also had as well. Um, I would choose MariaDB here. That requires CMake. So it could be that we're getting quite deep into dependencies here um, just for a simple tool. So I'm going to tend to think this is only to gain access on this machine to root. It's probably not necessary to go this deep down. So I'm going to ignore the LDAP dependency. Oh, no, I can't ignore the LDAP dependency. I need that for the send mail. Um, and that would be to report any access, any attempted access, I imagine, to an email address. Um, so let's look at Cyrus can it? recommends yeah I think I'll build it up as this far up to Cyrus Sazzle um, it's got a recommendation of Barclay DB which we've got installed all the rest are optional like I said I think Maria DB will be installed but maybe that's a thing to install at a later date where a lot more of the dependencies can be um, installed I don't think doesn't look like there's any configuration to get it to um, use MariaDB. Now whether that's uh, an, an option that's not explained here at all maybe. Um, I don't know but we can look at that to see if it is. <clears throat> and if it is maybe I can install MariaDB DB just as a basic install and then come back and reinstall it with its own um, dependencies. Um, so, now it's interesting because OpenLDAP's got a recommended dependency of Cyrus Sazzle, and Cyrus Sazzle's got an optional dependency on OpenLDAP, and OpenLDAP is a switch to enable Open OpenLDAP support. So whether that's a runtime um, thing or whether it needs it at compile, um, we'll have to find out because I will enable that being so we're going to be adding open LDAP. So I think that's the way to go. Let's just have a look at this again. We've got sudo which needs um, at least MTA. 
Um, the MTA requires OpenLDAP. OpenLDAP's got a recommendation for Cyrus Sazzle. And Cyrus Sazzle's got a recommendation for Barclay, which we've already got installed. So that's kind of the loop broken or the dependency tree broken. So this would be a good place to start. I'd say with MariaDB, just have another look at it. Oh, it requires CMake, so that could have lots of dependencies. Yeah, that's got quite a few. See, I will try and avoid MariaDB. <coughs> so let's go to Cyrus Sazzle then in the browser. We'll follow that down through sudo. So it's the MTA, wasn't it? I think they needed it. Send mail. Sorry, Sazzle. Okay, so let's download the package. Save it, go back. There's a patch here. So we'll fetch that and save it. Right, so the first thing we've got to do is a patch. So let's copy that ready to put in. Go to the terminal, extract, Cyrus Sazzle. And we can put that patch in straight away. That's done. Next page, install Sora Sazzle by running the following command. So what I'm going to do first of all is just run the configure. <coughs> Pipe it through less and just see, in fact I'll grep. See if there's anything about MariaDB. Oh, perhaps I should have done help actually. Um, right, so I've made a mistake there. Uh, I don't know what I've done to the source directory, so I'm going to remove it and start again. Recall that config command, but this time remember to put in a help. So it doesn't look like there's anything there about MariaDB, so it could be as a runtime dependency. Um, let's try it with less actually. Optional features, so maybe it could be something like enable MariaDB, for example, um, and that might be why it's not here. Um, you can see the enable Java. Um, it could be with package, even it could be right with um, MariaDB equals yes, for example. Um, ah, MySQL. So it does look like this is what would be used. I should have thought of that it'd be, it'd be called MySQL, even though it's the MariaDB package because it's a fork of MySQL. So it does look like it's um, something you might want to rebuild in the future. So what I'll do is I'll make a note of that against Cyrus Sazzle so that if and when in fact, to do it against MariaDB. <clears throat> if and when it gets installed, Cyrus Sazzle can be reinstalled to take advantage of MariaDB at that point. So I'll just make a note of that in my paper book. Okay. So let's uh, just have a look at the options here on the graphical browser. 
So we've got that there explained. We've got that one explained. That one's explained. So that switch, so I take it if you've got, well, I think GDBM is installed as part of LFS off the top of my head. So I guess if for some reason you want to use that database instead of the Barclay DB, um, you'd have to use that. If, for example, you hadn't installed up Barclay DB, then, then you'd use that. Now, the with LDAP, um, it may be that it needs LDAP installed. <coughs> So uh, I'm going to try and run it with that option. <clears throat> and if it fails, then what I'll do is I'll install OpenLDAP first. And let's just have a look at the explanations there. Once again, this looks like this needs or has got the capability of um, using a SQL database backend and it's disabled by default on um, OpenLDAP. So you can see how, how it's quite easy to get involved with um, dependency relationships and um, very deep levels you can get involved in trying to get involvement of all uh, functionality. Um, but thinking about it, the database for OpenLDAP, you'd probably only need that in an organization with, you know, we're managing several users and accounts and computers and so on. So it's probably unnecessary. So I think we can ignore that. Um, so I think there doesn't seem to be anything there particularly about Sazzle. Um, but what I'll do, because it says it's recommended, if Sara Sazzle doesn't build, I'll build Open LDAP, then build Sara Sazzle with the LDAP support, then go back and rebuild Open LDAP to ensure that it picks up Sara Sazzle if it needs to as part of the build installation. So let's get on with it then. Um, yeah, I just need to copy this configuration command, paste it in, and go back and grab the um, LDAP support option. and see if this configure works. <clears throat> it might complain that it can't find the LTAP, LDAP libraries or something like that. Or it may be that it's not actually checking for it explicitly and we find out LDAP support is required during the build. It looks like that's passed, so uh, oh, I'm not sure what those foreign characters are. Um, that's a bit strange. So now I'm going to go up, and it says to make with one thread. So we'll copy that. I'll time this, I think. This takes a little while. Download size. Oh no, it's quite a quick build, so I won't bother timing it then.
Okay, that's done. Does not come with a test suite, um, but it does mention about some test suite that if you're using the GSS API authentication mechanism. So we'll just go straight for the install commands. That's done. So skip past the command explanations. Configuring Sorry, Sazzle. Mentions there's a couple of config files there and some information on configuring it. If you need to run the Sazzle daemon as startup, you need to install the boot script, so I don't think we need that. You'll need to modify etc sysconfig sazzle auth and modify the auth mech parameter with your desired authentication mechanism. Okay, let's have a look at that file. Looks like that's blank. Or is this for the daemon maybe? Uh, could be for the daemon. Let's have a look at the graphical browser. Read it there. Yeah, that looks like that's part of this in its script for the daemon. So uh, we don't need to worry about that. <coughs> so I'll quit that come out of the root and tidy up. That's done. So that's part of the security chapter. So I'll get rid of that one. Off my list. Close the tab down off the browser and we can move on to open LDAP now. So back one up to open LDAP and this is, as it says this is a client. I'll just check the uh, dependencies and it's just Cyrus Sazzle I'm installing so um, I've gone to an FTP connection not to worry. I'll download the source tarball. Now I'll extract it. Okay, and the first command we've got is, oh, a patch, which I haven't downloaded, so let's do that now. Save it. So patch, auto reconf, and a configure. And I don't think there were any other options I was going to add in here because there were some mentioned, but let's have a look. So we've got static, disable debug, dis enable dynamic, enable versioning, enable crypt. This switch enables using crypt passwords. So that might be something you want to enable, possibly. Enable Sazzle password verica verification. Again, that may be something you want to install. Oh, sorry, these are all Uh, what's going on here? Uh, did I miss something? Ah, oh, right, I see. Yeah, that's a bit misleading. Um, Uh, 
Right, so it looks like all we need to do is to do this bit here because we only need the client side binaries, we're not installing the daemon. I thought I saw somewhere that it said at the top, was it this bit here? Uh, send mail. I'll keep on going, pressing the left arrow. Uh, I thought I saw somewhere where it said client. Right, okay. Yeah, so it does look like a lot of those extra options are to do with the daemon. So all the bits we need to do are just these bits here for the client side, which is all we're interested in. I'm not interested in running an LDAP server. There's no other machines that will be logging into this um, and you know it's just going to be a desktop machine so it's no real point so I'm going to start my command again just to be sure that I've built up the correct command so I'm going to do control C and start again so we've got to stay within this notebook bit and it finishes with the install and that should tie up with this here because the bits afterwards are all about the daemon so we don't want to do any of that I'll ignore all the options because most of these options are for the, the daemon for the server so let's go back up again and we'll copy all of this and paste it in once more next page and run that in and let's see how long this will take so a few minutes for the client Right, that's finished. So let's go back, and it looks like it's just the make install to complete this package. So I'll see if I've still got my install command with the root, yes. Okay, it's done. I'll tidy up. Go back to the browser. Uh, 
And this is in chapter 23. And I'm just going to write next to it that I've installed the client only and cross it off because I don't think uh, there'll be any need to install the server part at all. Get rid of that and we'll move on to send mail now. And in this browser I'll press the left arrow to go back, you can see top right it says send mail. So I'll get this file, it's only on an FTP server. Save that, extract it. And let's see what we need to do here. Oh yes, I forgot to look at the optional words. You can see it needs Ghost Script, which itself needs quite a few uh, dependencies, but it's only for creating PDF um, documentation. Um, Procmail 3.22, the configuration pro pro proposed below requires that Procmail be present at runtime and MPH. Right, okay, let's look at that. MPH is not in the book. Okay, um, Procmail, let's have a look at that. Oh, it's a mail processor, right, okay. I'm not sure what NPH does. Accessing PH servers, not what PH, don't know what PH is. So it looks like some sort of is in pH service, I don't know what that is at all. Um, what I shall do is just install Procmail as it's part of the BLFS. Um, obviously the send mail is not going to work correctly if it states it needs NPH as well for the configuration they specify. Um, so if it's important that you get send mail working, um, there's obviously going to be a little bit more work on your part. Um, Otherwise, it could probably be skipped this bit. But I'll install Procmail anyway, so we'll have to go to that next. We've got one of the optional, or, or the optional package installed already. So let's jump down here. So there's no test suite, it looks like it's just a, uh, oh there's patches as well, right okay. There's no configuration, it looks like, looks like it just gets installed, whatever it does, so um, let's extract that. change into it and put these commands in 
all got to be run as root. Right, it would help if I change into the proc mail directory and then run the commands. Right, could not find any mailer, so does it need send mail send mail first? Okay, so I'll have to abandon this. And begin with the previous one. Oh, right, it says to be present at runtime. Okay, I didn't read that. So I need to carry on building send mail first of all and then come back to proc mail. So let's so I'm going to start send mail again because I don't know what state that's in. I can't remember what I was doing with it. Extract it again. back <clears throat> so as a root user I need to install a user for the server so as you that's done no see the source tree send my readme for information on linking optional packages into the build Use the example below which adds support for Sazzle start TLS brackets open this cell and open node app. So we have got Sazzle. Um haven't got open TLS installed, but it says brackets open SSL, so I guess that would work. Or does it mean you can put in open SSL and open LDAP? So maybe I'll change that to open SSL. Because this didn't say open SSL. Uh, Um, start TLS as an option. So let's copy that there, then put open SSL in capitals and copy the rest. Then install it with the following command, install send mail with the following commands. So let's copy that first. Should be doing this as root really, I don't think this is part of the installation. So I'll come out, uh, let's have a look. DevTools site config. M4. Let me just check to see what I've done to the missions of this file. Right, it is root, so I'm going to change it to back to kernel text. Oops, I'm going to spell properly. Spell me your name. Okay, now I'm going to come back out of root and copy the remaining commands. Um, I'll just check what I've done to that file. Make sure I've copied both those configs. Yeah, there's the OpenSSL and there's the second one, these define commands here. So that's okay. So I can now run these commands.
okay that's finished there's no test suite so as the root user we copy all of this that's quite a few commands there all the way to the end there by the looks of it I presume we do it from here yep it looks to be working okay Okay, come to the next page, install the send mail installation operations guide with the following commands. No, remove op.pdf from the make and make and install commands below if you don't have ghost script installed. So I want to copy up to there because I haven't got ghost script installed. It's done and okay as that should be done as a normal user it shouldn't make too much difference but as the root user we want to copy up to there and after it as well and that should be finished Regression files in ETC mail. Create the ETC mail localhost and localhost names and ETC mail alias using the following commands as the root user. I'm not sure if that new alias is is a command or not, so I'm going to check in the graphical browser. Um, right, I've, done, oh no, I've got to come back to prop mail and I send mail. Yes, it is a command, so new aliases. So I need to just copy that, paste that in. Not open etc mail aliases as group writable file. Yeah, I don't understand what that means. So I understand that etc mail aliases is group writable. But why is there nothing about that in the there's no mention that in the instructions so let's try changing the mode of that file to G minus W and then rerun right that's worked now I'm not sure why that's created like that um, send mail's primary configuration file is complex not to be, to be directly edited recommend method for changing it to modify send mail MC and various M4 files then run the M4 macro processor from with mail as follows. So let's do this. Uh, and all this may be over the top just for a desktop, but um, I guess for sudo, if you want to know that somebody's trying to access a privileged user, it would send an email to you in theory. So you'd get to know about it. As I say, probably wouldn't want to know about that as a single user. 
Um, so this may actually be unnecessary what I'm doing, maybe going a little bit too deep here. And there's a boot script as well to install. So we need to go back here. Come. No, I won't come out. I'll change back into the sources. BLFS and the BLFS boot scripts and do make install. I'll take it as send mail, is it? Yep. Make install send mail. And let's see what happens when we start that up. Send. It tells us we can start it. That seems to be okay. And I think that should be it. There's a note there about how often send mail triggers for the queue and that is the end of that. So let's go back. Uh, sorry, no, we've got to go back to the top and then go into proc mail for the next bit of the configuration. So I'll go back hit well in fact I just need to log out. I imagine this is gonna fail because a lot of stuff was stuff was done as root. Yep, so I'll have to do this as root. And now I can just check proc mail's not there. No, I can extract proc mail. Oops. Change into it. Ready for compiling that. Back here, send mail is chapter 21. So I'll cross that off and close it down. And now I can build proc mail. Looks like that's quite a straightforward installation. So back to F5. So as the root user, that's right. So I've got to become the root to do all these commands. And this should work now. Or at least I've got a send mail command to respond to when it asks me what agent to use. Oh, it looks like it's found it automatically this time. It's doing stuff that it didn't do last time. Yeah, that's all gone through without waiting for a prompt from me. So it's detected send mail as the uh, mailing agent. So there's an explanations and that's done. That was that was an easy one. So I'll close that down now and we should be okay to get on with um sudo now. Oh uh, I didn't do that proc mail did I? Proc mail which is in chapter nineteen mail stroke news client so that's done so yeah now I'm going to do sudo so a quick look at this so if you haven't installed PAM you need to add this switch here without PAM but apart from that it looks like we can just accept the defaults in the configuration so send mail, mail server software, back to sudo. Let's see if I've already downloaded sudo. Oh, let's tidy up first. Sudo, no, it's not there. So let's get that downloading.
Save it. Back again. So the first thing we can do now, as you can see here, there's a a, a string where we can actually set the message to be set um, when the prompt comes up for the user to enter their password. So we can modify this if you wish to, you don't have to use the default one. So if I extract sudo paste this in, we can modify this so you can make it a bit more polite for example, say please enter password for user make it a bit more friendly and you'll get confirmation of that if I remember correctly at the end of the configuration Oh, it looks like it's actually gone off the screen so not a problem uh, right so we just run make now so I think it took a few minutes I'll time it just to keep a bit of sanity about timing of these things Right, so that's built. That was just a minute and a half. I think it's a 0.4 SBU, so that probably ties up with that, from what I remember, uh, from the LFS install. So just got this two commands here to put in as the root user. It's done. So there's some um, explanation of the options. Uh, the many options to sudo's config command. You can check help for a complete list. So the sudo's file can be quite complicated. This is configuration for the package. It is composed of two types of entries, ace, aliases, basic variables, and user specifications, which specify who may run what. The installation installs a default configuration as no privilege installed for any user. A couple of common configuration changes are set are to set the path for the user for the super user and to allow members of the wheel group to execute all commands after providing their own credentials. Use the following commands to create the etc sudo as dot d forward slash sudo configuration file as the root user. So let's do that. 
and it says the sudo developers hardly recommend using the vice sudo program to edit the sudo as file um, this will provide basic sanity checking like syntax parsing and file permission to avoid some possible mistakes that could lead to a vulnerable configuration if PAM is installed in the system which it is in our case sudo is built with PAM support in that case issue the following command as the root user to create a PAM configuration file so let's do that obviously you haven't bothered to install PAM then you would skip this bit it would just do nothing if you did add it in because there wouldn't be anything to look at the file so that's done so that should be it um, what I'm going to do is to sh just show a couple of changes that um, can be made to the sudo as file um, in fact let's test it first of all I'm going to go to my fourth terminal login as kernel attacks so now if I want to do something like um, change into the root directory can't do it so if I now prepend that with sudo it gives me this message and there's our custom message that we entered on the configuration line put in my own password oh now is that because cd is an inbuilt command I wonder uh, that's failed let's try yeah it must be an inbuilt command into bash rather than an external um, an external program but you can see anyway that uh, ls root sudo ls root has worked if I run it again um, without sudo you can see it's not working it's it's preventing me but with sudo or sudo it is it is working so it proves that the um, sudo is working correctly and because I've already added myself to the wheel group um, that's why I've got access uh, I can gain access to root privileges uh, even though I'm an ordinary user now I'm not sure what the timeout is for sudo now um, I want to wait for it to time out so that I can show um, another option which I'm going to set so I'm not even sure if running the sudo command actually resets the timer or not I wouldn't have thought it would do but I don't know for sure so I'll leave off of that. Basically what I'm going to show you is how to set the sudo as file so that um, you don't have to enter the password. You're just a, an accepted user. In fact, I'm not sure if logging out will force that. Yeah, so it's asking me for a password again. It's not giving me that big lecture about being careful and great responsibility and so on, great responsibility and great power and so on. It's just asking now just for the password. Um, so there is a setting in the, if I edit the etc sudoers, in fact it probably should be vice sudo it said didn't it, dot d forward slash sudo um, you can add if I can remember correctly in here if you type in no password colon colon like that it it means now when I save this that um, anybody that's in the wheel group can become uh, or get gain root privileges without having to enter their password so it's a bit of a security issue but because I'm going to, go, going to be entering sudo so often, installing packages, um, it's just going to save me a bit of typing. So if I now log in and type, so ls root doesn't work, sudo ls root, it hasn't asked me for a password, it's automatically given me access to the root, but as you can see I'm still 
the um, unprivileged user kind of text. So that's one thing I thought I'd show you. Um, as I say, you probably don't want to leave that as it is, especially after you finish building. So I'm going to make a note uh, to remind myself to set that back after I've finished. Um, I doubt if I'll keep this installation when I've finished, but just in case I do, I'm going to remove the password option, or sorry, the no password option, so that um, the unprivileged user gets prompted every time. Otherwise, effectively, the unprivileged user is now a privileged user, effectively. The only difference is I've got type sudo in in front of every command that I want to run as a privileged user. So, um, right, I've logged out of there. I'm going to log out of here. Tidy that up. Uh, go to the graphical browser and that's in security of course so that'll be the last security package that I'm explicitly going to install and so the rest are going to be or not the rest of them but some some will be picked up as we go along and I can get rid of that tab and go to the browser here and go back to that section at least um, I'm just going to get this graphical browser up and check to see what tabs we've got here. So we've got one about stripping, that's going to come at the end. That one's there waiting for cron. This is just about post LFS installation, so really I can do away with that tab because we've done all this stuff here installed the selected security packages plus others there's just some tools here um, which um, are not absolutely necessary at this stage um, things like Parted you might want to install Smartmon tools um, maybe even GPTF disk they're sort of nice haves nice to haves but at the moment they're not really necessary We're trying to build up a desktop machine these are more about you know, managing the system itself. So that's kind of what we're getting away from. There's other editors here. If you don't like Vim, um, it is my preferred one. It's what I started on on a Solaris machine using um, Vi. Um, so I won't be... Kate is actually a KDE. Uh, let's just have a look at that. It's a KDE. Yeah, it needs frameworks, so... We wouldn't be able to install that one anyway at the moment. Um, and then other shells, again, you know, Bash is what I started on. I've always used Bash. I have used the C shell, actually, which is not there. I think I've used LSH once or twice. Dash, I believe, is the default one that comes with Ubuntu. Um, so I'm not going to go through them. Virtualization, I'm not going to go through that either. Um, so, yeah, I think I'll get rid of that tab. This is all the contents of Beyond Linux and Scratch, so I'll leave that there. It'll be handy to have to jump to certain packages. So really, links, it's going to be reinstalled. Um, what does it need? We've got an MTA now. We've installed Shire Utils and Unzip, so we could do this one next, actually, because it only needs one dependency, which is Zip wget that needs a couple of other dependencies um, let's have a look at these uh, let's install PCRE2 libidn needs libunistring git I won't be installing that I don't think string optional text live. Mm, I don't know if I'll be doing text live. I might do. I haven't decided yet. It's to do with typesetting and it's quite a specific thing. Um, LibIDN that needs. 
So let's move that there. And PCRE2, yeah, so um, it's probably not really my choice to do these so early on, but because they're quite basic tools and, for example, links we're using um, and wget, well, probably don't need now because we've got links, but as you saw before, I did use it to download something. So I guess, or come to think of it, actually, the... Um, X Windows package has got a few scripts or a few wget lists to download various packages in bulk. So yes, I will do that now. So yeah, I think they're the next two that I'll do. Um, I'll install all these dependencies plus wget and links and then finally get onto the X Windows installation.